Hello and welcome to another trip report and welcome to Ondai in the very south of France. In fact, the Spanish border is about 200 yards that way. Today I'm going to be taking a very special train, the Sud Express, and I'll be in their top tier of service, Grand Class. That is a sleeper train that goes along the top of Spain, down into Portugal. Really looking forward to it. We're heading to Lisbon on the Sud Express. Enjoy the video. The station here at Ondai was primarily built as a changeover station. The Sud Express is a revival of a train of the same name which used to run from Paris in the late 19th century. Trains coming from Paris use standard gauge, 4 feet 8.5 inches, but to travel into Spain, the carriages needed to have their wheels changed. Iberian gauge, which prevails across Spain and Portugal, is a curious 5 feet 5 and 21 30 seconds of an inch wide. The revived Sud Express starts here at Ondai instead of Paris, but you can easily make a connection the same day using the TGV from Paris. Today, the journey by sleeper train across Spain and Portugal takes around 11 hours. Trains bound for Spain leave from the Iberian gauge tracks on the far side of the station. It's quite a slog with a bag and I wasn't aware of any lifts, so bear that in mind if you're using this train yourself. The train arrives from Lisbon in the morning and sits in sidings for most of the day. It arrives into the station around about half an hour before departure. Passengers travelling on this train must have a valid travel document like a passport or ID card and show their ticket. As the train sits in the platform, it's a good time to get a glance of the unique wheel arrangement on these Talgo train sets. One wheel is shared between two carriages at each join, providing a unique suspension system. The locomotive that hauls the train into the platform is detached and sent to run around at the east end of the station. It'll then run around to the front and haul our train in the opposite direction, towards Portugal. Boarding is straightforward. Your carriage number and your berth are both located on your ticket and it's a case of simply walking the train until you find it. I'll give you a guided tour of the room a little bit later in the video, but for now the train is leaving from the same platform that Hitler and Franco had their only meeting on, the famous meeting at Ondai in 1940. This map shows just how close the station of Ondai is to the French and Spanish border. The first thing that we do is to clear the bridge and down the middle of the river is the border with Spain. Our first stop after just a couple of minutes of travel is the Spanish border town of Irun. It was only last year in 2018 that the Sud Express was actually extended from this town, Irun, into Ondai, which makes the border crossing more straightforward and provides a direct connection into the TGV from Paris. I should say from the outset that travelling on this particular train in Grand Class was a personal ambition of mine, and it's not cheap either. It's 201 euro for solo occupancy of one of these Grand Class sleepers. The cheapest way to travel is by promotional fare in Tourista reclining seat, as seen here. That's €28 Euro one way. Sharing a four-berth sleeper will cost you from €38 Euro one way, and a Preferente sleeper, which is available in a two-berth or one-berth configuration, is available for €135 Euro one way. These have no en-suites. So now we've left Ondai and Irun, let's have a quick look around at our Grand Class sleeper. This is actually one of the older Talgo trains that operates train hotels in Spain. As you can see, there are a couple of seats here. These will fold down and this will basically collapse down on top of those to make the bed when the time is right. Got a lock on your door here and also here. That's your light switch. There are also some hangers there if you've got a jacket or something you don't want to get creased. This thing here is actually my key card. Um, strange looking key card, looks like it's straight out of the 70s. I haven't seen one of those for a very long time. I should probably point out that the key didn't work at all for the duration of the journey. 
right in the roof space here you can see that we've got an extra pillow and if you had someone on the top bunk that is an extra place where you can store some of your kit as well. Now let's look at the bathroom. Door opens like this and hopefully stays there. So uh, it's very pink just like the rest of the inside of the train. I'm not quite sure what they were thinking when they originally decorated these trains and I'm not sure it's been refurbished for quite a long time. But anyway, there's your toilet. Up here, um, you've got a spare toilet roll and your towels. Up here, you've got a couple of amenity kits and I'll have a quick look at those in just a moment. And this is the shower. Very small, of course, but uh, perfectly formed and you don't really need anything else for just one night on the train. It's always a massive luxury, I think, to get a shower on a train. There's your shower curtain too. Again, light switch and a couple of bottles of water and your sink and that is pretty much that. The amenity kits themselves are fairly basic but contain everything you'll need for a good night's sleep including a comb, some basic toiletries, earplugs and napkins. There's also a cafe bar on board, which was so busy for the duration that I had to actually record this footage well after everyone had gone to bed. It closes at midnight and reopens at 6am the following morning. I'd heard some really good things about the food on this train, and there's a comprehensive menu too. It's also incredibly cheap. A three course meal with a drink comes in at just 15 euros. All of the food is freshly prepared in this small kitchen in the cafe bar coach. Despite the historically good reviews that I'd read about the food on board, the suspiciously low prices and the fact that you have to sit at the bar to eat made me kind of question whether I was going to get a good meal at all. I needn't have worried, all of the food was very good. This cold octopus salad was delicious and interesting. I followed this with another fish dish with crushed potatoes and vegetables. It's difficult to believe that this train makes a profit on the food they're serving. It's definitely some of the best value food I've ever had on board any mainline train. One thing you must know if you're going to use this train is that the cafe bar is cash only and this is not well advertised before you get on board. A couple of passengers had to get off the train late at night and pay IOUs because they hadn't brought any cash. The train leaves the mountainous north and heads across the northern plains of Spain. Late at night it stops at Valladolid and this is probably your cue to get to bed. So here we go, that's the bed folded out. As you can see it just comes down from that little partition in the wall that I explained earlier. Something that I didn't notice is this. Now, this would normally be your route up to the top bunk, which you can see is just here. Anyway, uh, I'm ready for a good night's sleep. Good night. The train is due into Lisbon at 7.30, so 6am seems as good a time as any to be waking up. If you travel during spring and summer, this is also the time that the sun starts rising above the horizon. The cafe bar is open and you can buy a small breakfast with a coffee. So in the background you can see the sun is just starting to come up. Uh, we're following the Tagus River down into Lisbon. It's quite a lovely ride um, down into the city this morning. Just want to share with you a couple of um, thoughts that I had overnight about the bed. Firstly, the bed is extremely comfortable. It's one of the most comfortable um, sleeper train beds I've ever had. And I've been on quite a few sleeper trains. But I will say that this is a Talgo train, which is very, very low to the floor. And the suspension is not quite as tight as you would expect on other trains. So you will find that in the night you will sway quite a bit. And also, 
at points the journey was quite loud and I did make use of the earplugs. Normally I don't require earplugs to sleep um, but I did last night so if you are going to take this train be mindful. It is quite noisy and it does sway a little more than a normal sleeper train. I woke up once during the night which isn't too bad and I did get six hours of sleep. If you're a light sleeper you may find it a challenge. Another thing that I found a bit curious about this room, uh, it occurred to me last night actually, just before I got the uh, seats made down to a bed as you can see here, there's actually no table in this room, I'm not quite sure why that is, um, there's two first class seats as you saw earlier on, and um, I don't think it would have been too hard to put a table that uh, maybe extended out from here somewhere, but um, yeah, that's just how it is I guess. Also, the last thing that I think you need to know about this room is that there is no power socket anywhere. At least not that I can see, and maybe someone in the comments is going to tell me that I'm not looking in the right place. There's no power socket. The only place where you can actually get electricity is in the shape of socket in here, and that is not somewhere that you really want to be charging your devices overnight. So be super mindful of that if you're coming on board. Um, you may not be able to get power. Invest in a power pack, just like me. As we approach Lisbon, I'll do a little bit of summing up. Now, this was a bucket list trip for me, and it's one that I'd wanted to do for many years. So 200 euros was a pretty fair outlay for me. However, if you're not an enthusiast and just want to take the train for the experience, I think you'll get a much better value experience in the four berth sleepers, which you'll share with strangers. And so I made it. I'm here at Lisbon Santa Apollonia station at half past seven in the morning. I've got a full day now in Lisbon. I love sleeper trains. They drop you in the city so early. Wonderful experience on the Sud Express. A few things that I think they could definitely improve on, um, but overall a fantastic service. Sleeper trains are incredible fun. I do encourage you to try them if you haven't already. You might just surprise yourself. Really hope you've enjoyed the video and definitely subscribe if you've liked this video. There are plenty more just like this to come on this channel. But until next time, I'll see you around.